We're going to be covering Anime Exposed. And uh, you may find that things look a little different right now. That's because I figure that the problem with Anime Exposed is that I haven't been going down to their level. So I've decided to become Anime Exposed, Cirrus. And by decided to, I mean, actually, uh, the artist behind this, uh, Lil Kitty, decided that it would be okay if I used this avatar. They did it for practice, uh, and now I'm going to use it for the betterment of all. Um, this feels like a super villain uh, origin story, actually. <laughs> So let's ignore all this. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Little Kitty, for allowing me to use the avatar. This is a blessing and a curse. Speaking of blessings and curses, let's get into the fan art section before we get into the anime exposed. So first of all, from Spooks, we have no context given, but this is honestly a really nice, just like <laughs> ink drawing of a uh, of my character. City Life 2050. Thank you very much for resubscribing for uh, with Prime. I enjoy the Bezos bucks. Also, the next one we have is from uh, Larry Tate, and it's Shadow the Hedgehog going, Who are you? And me, as a psychopath, going, I'm you. I'm Shadow the Hedgehog. This is who I am. Fucking... <laughs> Anyway, as always, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want to submit fan art or curses, uh, the best way to do so is dropping it into the, uh, not the description. Wow, I'm stupid. Into the fan art section of the Discord. That is where they will be seen in chronological order. And thank you all so much for the fan art that has been submitted so far. With that said, let's go ahead. Let's get into anime exposed. Let's do it. Let's do it, everyone. Maybe Cyrus will end up as a villain of a shitty Christian cartoon. No, my villain arc isn't going to be isn't going to be because of that. Uh, that said, I do want to thank. Uh, we had another anonymous donation for fifty dollars towards the car repair fund. We are currently sitting at two thousand three hundred sixty-one. We are fifty-nine percent of the way there. Thank you for everybody who has donated so far. There will be a link in the description of the video if you have the ability to help me get back on the road since my wheels are very very broken. Um. But with all that said, if you're watching on Twitch, you can hit exclamation mark dono, and that will bring up the link as well. Come on, anime exposed. I think I got to turn off my background music because they use like cringy, scary background music. So let's go. Did you catch the first episode? Those. Why is it broken? A little play on words there, me. Why is that? Why is that so broken? Is there a way that I can like download this so that it's not as broken? Anyway. Meaning, son. S O N. S O N. Okay, so the first episode is called Those Who Challenge the Sun, and he spells it exactly how it isn't spelled on the actual thing. Like, th this is spelled S U N. And apparently, he, th he's, he has to deliberately misspell it to make his point. Why? The matter of the episodes are titled after biblical themes. Making this false religion modeled after similar theological themes in Christianity is reason enough to avoid this anime. Because a fake religion in a fictional universe looks like a stereotype of Christianity, therefore you should avoid the anime? No, no. That's not how we do things here. Just because something makes you uncomfortable in the world of anime doesn't mean we should just avoid it hopelessness for everything that's promised in Christianity. Rose shows her despair. I'm sorry, Al. For a while there, I thought we'd really found a way to get your body back. Give me the Philosopher's Stone! Rose! Like I was just saying, it was a fake. It wasn't real. And besides, it's shattered now. Liar! You want to keep it for yourself, don't you? So you can use it on your bodies! That's right! And so you can try to bring your mother back again! People don't come back from the dead, Rose. Not ever. Not ever. But he promised me. He said if I prayed it would happen. Miracle! That hope was all I had left! What am I supposed to believe in now? Tell me what to do! 
He can't. The whole point here is that you believed in a false prophet. That's not a critique on all religion, and that's not a critique on Christianity specifically in all of its myriad forms. That is literally just a critique on people who parrot themselves around as false prophets, who promise you the world and can give you nothing. Like, <laughs> you've never heard the dub of FMA? Dude, the dub is actually really good. Believe that. You have to figure it out. Stand up and walk. Keep moving forward. You've got two good legs, so use them. You're strong enough to make your own path. This episode had lots to do with biblical imagery. Yep. All this dialogue goes straight into your subconscious and has the potential to distort your views of truth within Christianity. Okay, so you literally believe that because the anime has a fictional religion in it, then it's going to bury itself in your subconscious and change the way that you personally view all religion. I think the best argument against that is literally every single Full Metal Alchemist fan who is also a Christian. This is a critique not on Christianity. This is a critique on organized religion and the myriad of ways in which it can be abused. By the logic that's being used by Little Light Studios, no matter what critique is given towards organized religion, it must narcissistically be pointed at the Christian faith. And in a similar narcissistic vein, they must lash out and do everything in their power to defend that faith, despite the fact that this was not making a full-on commentary on Christianity, period. Fake equals real to these guys? Yes. They, there is an inability to separate fact from fiction here. They'd argue that they're not confusing fact and fiction, but then they argue in the same type of breath that your subconscious can't tell the difference. And unless they are above this type of mental manipulation, then they can't tell fact from fiction either. And these themes bury themselves in their, uh, in their subconscious just as much. But also every single Christian has uh, criticized false prophets. Even Jesus himself talks about that. Yep. But because Jesus talks about false prophets, I guess we, we can't have any conversation about that in Christianity. It'd be bad. And dangerous message they are trying to convey with this episode you don't need god you must make your own path no you don't need religion you don't need a prophet you don't need a leader on earth those are the things that are being critiqued cornello was not an actual representative of god in this world because a god does exist in the world of full metal alchemist it's truth the truth behind the door literally he calls himself god or at least notes that other people have called him god cornello is not a representative of an actual deity here this was the dismantling of a false religion. If anything, you should be praising the fact that this religion was dismantled. And had I actually watched Full Metal Alchemist as a kid, the way that I would have interpreted this would be not as a critique on Christianity, but as a critique on other religions that I considered false. Man, how depressing. Without the hope that lies at the heart of Christianity, life would seem pointless. No, it wouldn't. Like, life doesn't seem pointless to me, and I'm not a Christian. Like, it's... Also, uh, AJ Copper Singh, thank you very much for the Tier 1 subscription. But, no, for me, I don't need a religion or a deity to tell me to feel hope. If anything, I feel like my hope would be undermined by the fact that somebody is literally instructing me to feel it. For me, hope comes from the things that are around me. I hope that I'm going to have a good day, and I'm going to do what I can to make that happen. I hope that I'll be able to make some impact in other people's lives so that they can carry that positive impact going forward into other people's lives. 
I have a hope that someday, eventually, the world will become a better place because people are trying to make it better. And they're not falling by the wayside when challenged for being, say, LGBTQ as an example. I have hope that things are going to improve and things are going to get better. I have personal hope that things will improve in my life. That hope isn't eroded because there's a lack of a deity. And likewise, there's not a purpose in my life that's eroded because of a lack of a person who's explaining that purpose to me. Just like there's, there's, there's a saying that goes along with a lot of this. If I am to have no master, whose slave then will I be? And it's a nonsense question. It assumes that you need to have a slave master. It assumes that your purpose in life needs to be that of a slave. Likewise here, you assume that I need to have an ultimate hope. I don't. I merely need to have something grounded. I merely need to have the things that are around me. Friends, family, hobbies, things I care about. These are things that are important to me. You don't necessarily need this ultimate purpose or ultimate hope to live and go forward. Ed and, El uh, Ed and Alphonse find a lot of their purpose in the show merely by the journey and the people that they meet along the way. Even as they learn going forward that several of the things that they want to accomplish, they physically can't. They cannot bring their mother back. They learn that they cannot restore their bodies, not without great personal risk. And not just risk, like literally they have to sacrifice. Ed sacrifices his ability to perform clap alchemy. They find that they do not get to have the happy ending that they originally wanted. They have to modify their expectations greatly throughout the series. Not even counting all the people who die in the series. You know, Rip Maze Hughes. They, in the story, discover hope in those around them. Likewise, Rose can discover hope in those around her. They do not need a false prophet to explain to them that they should be hopeful. That's the message there. So what's the deal with the Philosopher's Stone? Why is Potter it freezing? After? It is, Michelle, and the history dates back all the way to 300 AD. Some alchemists even say... Its history goes back to Adam, who acquired the knowledge of the stone directly from God. The Philosopher's Stone is a legendary alchemical substance capable of turning base metals such as mercury into gold. It's also called the Elixir of Life, useful for rejuvenation and for achieving immortality. For many centuries, it was the most sought after goal in alchemy. Yeah, I bet. Acquiring the knowledge and immortality to become a god? That sounds just like the lie in the Garden of Eden. Wait, 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 wait. Did that actually say become a god? Hold on. Eden. Rejuvenation and immortality. That is not the same thing as a god. Like, literally... To become a god? You literally had the Wikipedia article in front of you in doing this, and you still couldn't say the thing the actual article said. City of Life, thank you very much for redeeming your points for an... Hada hada, you fucking monster. Within the story of Full Metal Alchemist, you find that the Philosopher's Stone is a lie. Because the idea is that it is a thing to be sought after and found. What is discovered through the story of Full Metal Alchemist, however, is that the Philosopher's Stone is not a thing to be found, but an object to be created. And the way that it is created requires the sacrificing of several thousand human lives. Because what the Philosopher's Stone is, is condensed energy. And by sacrificing the energy of several thousand human beings into the Philosopher's Stone, that's how it's able to bypass the laws of equivalent exchange. It's not actually bypassing those laws. The stone itself contains the energy of several thousand spent lives. As a result, characters like Father in the show are living philosopher stones. They have shit tons of dead bodies in them, supplying them with eternity with nigh eternal life and any time that they suffer damage they can just use energy from the literal thousands of lives within them to recover 
at the end of the day, the Philosopher's Stone in Full Metal Alchemist is representative of an idea. The idea that sometimes the thing that we seek is actually incredibly fucking toxic. I want you to consider for a fact, or for a moment, the idea of desperately clinging on to a toxic relationship. Despite how bad for you the relationship might be, but you want it because it is what is comfortable to you. It's what you know. And you are desperately trying for it over and over again, despite the actual human cost of pursuing that relationship, which you should be abandoning instead. The Philosopher's Stone and Full Metal Alchemist is representative of a very similar idea. Within Full Metal Alchemist, the Philosopher's Stone requires several human lives to be spent. Human lives not taken at the consent of the humans themselves. Therefore, pursuing the Philosopher's Stone does not become pursuing a way to get your mother back or a way to uh, recreate your body. The, the actual quest for the Philosopher's Stone is a pursuit in genocide. That is what it is. This is not the same thing and the same idea that was discussed about with the Philosopher's Stone in, say, Harry Potter or in in literally most other literature when you're talking about the Philosopher's Stone. It is somewhat unique to Full Metal Alchemist that its Philosopher's Stone acts as a literal genocide device. But let's go ahead and continue. The Garden of Eden. Uh, I hate... Is a Kabbalah tree in the intro of this series? Good catch. The Kabbalah tree is a known occult symbol, and it plays a major part in the end of this anime when Edward meets God. Oh, can't wait for that part. I'm sure it'll be a massive theological mess. It doesn't have to be a theological mess. Like, this is, this is so fucking infuriating. It doesn't have to be a theological mess, because all it has to be is its own fiction. The idea that is... The idea of seeing this universe's version of God only needs to function within the fiction of this universe. It doesn't have to be a theological mess because it's not trying to be Christian theology. Why can't you guys get that? Little Light Studios, why is it so hard for every single one of you to understand that a fictional work can exist in its enclosed space as a fictional work? Referencing things where it will, but not necessarily making commentary on them elsewise. How hard is it for you to understand the very basic concept of what is a fiction? Fox of Fate, thank you very much for redeeming your points for an oh well. Oh well. As this news, the Elric brothers run into the military who has discovered the recipe to create a philosopher's stone. So get this, the only way to create the stone is with the souls of humans. Yep. What did you guys do to this place? Don't get angry because you can't crack it. Throwing things won't help. We did crack it. Huh? We cracked the code and decrypted the notes. Really? You did? But that's a good thing, isn't it? This is the devil's research. It should have been destroyed. Dr. Marco was right. It's evil. What's so evil about it? The main ingredient for a Philosopher's Stone is human life. In order to manufacture even a single stone, you have to make multiple human sacrifices. How could the military authorize research into something so horrible? I can't believe it. How awful. Just pretend you never heard any of it. Now isn't that something straight out of the pits of hell? After the boys have their run-in with all kinds of different groups in search of the Philosopher's Stone, they run into the antagonist of the story, a homunculi, an alien-like- a, a what? A what? Pronounce that again. Please pronounce that again. Please. I'm begging you. Run-in with all kinds of different groups in search of the Philosopher's Stone, they run into the antagonist of the story, a homunculi, Yep, we're just, going, we're just going. We're just going out. Going out to get going out, going out to get milk. Going out to get milk. Fucking I'm done. A hermo A hermunculi? A hermunculi. Real a, a what the fuck? 
What? Why? Why would you call it that? What the fuck is a hermunculi? A fucking... Why? Why? A her... A, a hermunculi. Hermunculi! Why? <laughs> read! Fucking read! There isn't an R there! Oh my god, the only R here stands for reject! Like all of you! Every one of you! Uh... Run into uh. the antagonist of the story. A hermunculi, an alien-like creature who goes by the name Father. Of course he does. And if I didn't know any better, I'd say he sure resembles old artist depictions of God. Robe, sandals, authoritative in nature, and his followers bring him a sacrifice. Hello, Father! I brought you a human sacrifice! Your father, where is Right. He does have some strange similarities to God, the Father, but in this story... Right, because I'm sure that the Jewish God Yahweh is definitely a blonde white man. Definitely. Never. Yeah, 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 I'm pretty sure. Hello, Adam Smith. Thank you very much for the follow. Could you please inform us about the the your theory of the invisible hand of the market? Uh, yeah, also, the character only looks this way, not as a representation of God, but because he's literally copied fucking Hohenheim's DNA. He's the old. His fandom wiki says he is the evil doer, yet he is God with a capital G. And what's really to. No! No! Not how that works! Look, it is in quotations! Because he calls himself that, not because he is that. What? No. It is in quotations because he thinks he is God. He considers himself God, but he's not. He is like Cornello. He is a false fucking dude. I'm gonna fucking scream. He's not actually God. You're reading off of a fucking wiki and trying to get all of the information for this off of the goddamn wiki. I need drywall. I need to pulverize it with my forehead. That was wood. If you're gonna make your argument, Please, do not straw man what you're trying to argue against. The homunculus is on the screen. Show me where the R, show me where the R is in the homunculus, Little Light Studios. Please. Please. Do they not know what research is? Apparently to them, research is just glancing at the wiki page over and over again. Is God with a capital G, and what's really twisted is that he is the creator of the seven deadly sins. There are seven deadly sins within man: lust, greed, sloth, gluttony, envy, wrath, and of course, pride. Wow, that is totally wrong. Because God is the designer of the law, a law that is called holy. And the Ten Commandments reveals to us what sin is and how it harms us. How hard is it for you to understand that this is a fictional world? It's not wrong. It's correct within the realm of that world. What the fuck is wrong with you people? In 1 John 3, 4, it says that sin is transgression of the law, the law that God created. And God okay. did not create sin. Satan did. To God, God is blasphemy. No, right? it's not. No, 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 no. This is where you're theologically wrong. You're theologically incorrect. It literally says in Isaiah that God creates evil. Do not fucking try to squirm out of this, you absolute fucking morons. Your own Bible says that God creates sin. 
It is in your book. It is not just within the fucking pages of your Bible. It is also logically consistent. If your God is all-knowing, he is responsible in that he has perfect knowledge of the end result of all of his actions, and his actions directly led to the manifestation of sin. Therefore, your God is responsible for every sin that has ever been committed, including genocide, including rape. They are all at your God's feet, you absolute fucking morons. Every fucking one of them is your God's fault, theologically. It is not difficult. This isn't even me angry because you're misrepresenting an anime now. This is me angry because you are using this as an, in a fucking attempt to brainwash people to agree with your theological side, and you get literally all of it fucking wrong. This is not hard. No. This is not difficult. Yeah. Jamie Lynn, thank you for the 10 bits. Hannah Reloaded just rage quit her stream for the day. Oh, Jesus. So I'm not the only one shrieking and yelling. Arfern, thank you so much for the follow. So, Sirs, when are, we go <laughs> when are we going for coffee with Anime Exposed? Well, considering that my car is broke right now, uh, I can't exactly go for coffee at all. But no, I've, I've literally already stated in a video uh, and in part of a comment section that I would gain nothing from a conversation with these people. Like, I would be going in with the sole purpose of trying to figure out what is going on in their head, and they would be going in with the sole purpose of trying to convert me into their fucking twisted reality. It, th this, is not, this is not difficult stuff. This is not difficult. This is not hard. On a, on a bare minimum, just a bare minimum, if you cannot be fucked to understand the, uh, like the, the basic principles of a fucking cartoon, how is it, how am I to assume that you know jack shit about one of the most complex books ever written? One of the longest pieces of literature humankind has ever put to page. How am I to assume that you are going to accurately represent anything in your fucking book when you can't get shit right because you're too lazy to do the to do more than looking at the first fucking part of a goddamn wiki page on every anime you go over? How? <sighs> to God is blasphemy. Right you are, Mikey. So check no, this it's out. not. The way the Father creates the seven deadly sins is with his own blood. He's going to make a new homunculus. The stone is added into the bloodstream. If it is able to merge, then a human-based homunculus is created. Consider it yours. And right here, yet again, is this common theme of possession showing up in yet another anime. Yeah, possession is a theme within fiction. It is also a theme in your Bible. Why the fuck does that matter? Fox of Faith, thank you very much for redeeming your points for an hada hada. And you are nowhere near as much of a monster as the people who put together this absolute fucking stain on humanity common theme of possession showing up in yet another anime. Wang? What? Ah, you mean the guy I took this body from? Sorry, but your friend just checked out and left greed this body. This so is precisely opposite of the blood of Jesus. It says in Matthew 20... Wait, so which is it? Is it... Is it that the blood of Jesus, is it that he's, he's, he's doing things and he's representative of God? Or is he doing things and it's exactly not how God would operate? Which is it? Which is it, guys? Which is it? Which one is it? Wait, is that anime Jesus? I think this, is this from the fucking, 
anime where Jesus and Buddha are roommates. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The blood of Christ is to remove sin in our lives, not to seal us in our sin. You see, the Father is shown as a cold-hearted tyrant bent only on destroying humans to achieve mm -hmm. his selfish goal in consuming God. The Father reveals his true feelings towards all humans by saying this. When you notice an insect on the ground, do you stop to consider it a fool? <sighs> the life of an insect is so beneath you that it would be a waste of your time to even consider judging it. That would be an accurate summation on my feelings towards you humans. He is arrogant, self-righteous. He deems only power and ownership over the world, perfect goodness and being, and divine order worthy of attention, and he seeks to become absolutely superior to the human race. Perfect goodness? Divine order? Someone who has the ability to heal people? Your arm is broken. Okay. It's not broken anymore. Those attributes are of the God of heaven. That's so messed up because the truth is God loved the human race. So much that he flooded it and killed everyone. So much that he created hell to torture them all. God so loved the human race so much that he created pestilence and disease. God loved humans so much that in his omnipresence, he is literally sodomizing all of us right now. Come on, dude. Come on. Father is not God. It, literally, he, he is not God. He meets God in the anime. He's not God. Die a treacherous death on the cross in order to save us. This demonstration of his love for humans proved it is infinitely strong. And there's Do you guys get off to this? I'm sorry, I, I, I just have to know. I just have to know. Like, Little Light Studios, honestly, I, I have to know. When you see God on the cross getting whipped and bleeding, is that, like, is that your kink? Is that is that what it is? Not to mention, I love how you say he died a treacherous death on the cross, but wasn't all of this part of his plan? Like, is it really treachery when this was literally all part of his plan all along? There's a deeper under the surface. The accusation is that all the evil in the world is really God the Father's fault. Look, you might it, it is. It literally is. Again, it says so in Isaiah, dude. If healed our that does not mean we're friends! It's pretty apparent that you're the root of all this evil! If that's not satanically inspired, then I don't know what is. Wait, hold on. So, it's, it's, wait. I have to wrap my head around this one. I have to wrap my head around this one. So let me get this straight. Because Edward told the villain of the show that he is the root of all of this evil, local evil, the evil he's experienced. The creation of Philosopher's Stones, the genocide of, uh, of Ishvala, the possession of his friend Lin, which we then find out later was actually intentional. Uh, Ling actually wanted to be turned into greed because he wanted immortality. All of that shit, all of it. Just, just I, I have to wonder, by saying that he is the root of all this evil here, and mind you, also, this is the American dub of the show, so it might not even be completely accurate to the original source material. By that logic, he is saying that Father is actually a deity and is actually the source of all evil. No. The Father in Full Metal Alchemist is not fucking God. He's not. He's not. And that is... All I can manage. That is, that is literally, that is all I can stomach. I cannot handle more of this. I am absolutely livid. I want to slam my head into a wall. I want to scream a thousand screams, and I wish to go engage in at least one of Raz's wonderful homemade brownies. That's where I'm at right now. That's where my brain is at. So, Sirs, call yourself God and let me make an episode about you. Oh, whoa, everyone. Uh, God here, the unblinking one. Blink, blink. How are all of you today?
Blink, blink, blink. Anyways, all of that terrible, terribleness out of the way. If you guys enjoyed this episode, scream with me in the comment section. Let me know if you too would like to experience the cold embrace of death. And as always, everyone... I want to say insert end of video tagline here. I'm, I'm, no, no, we don't get that this time. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>